Hello, my name is Ken. I was diagnosed with central retinal vein occlusion in 2002. I'm not a doctor and I have no medical training, so remember to consult your physician without delay when making medical decisions. A number of studies have been conducted by medical professionals in patients with central retinal vein occlusion. Some of these studies were at least partially aimed at documenting what happens when central retinal vein occlusion is left to run its course without extraordinary medical intervention. What happens if you just leave it alone? One such study is the central vein occlusion study. The central vein occlusion study is widely referenced in medical writings on the subject of central retinal vein occlusion. This study was carried out in the late 1980s and early 1990s and involved more than 700 patients, the majority of whom were followed for more than two years. Findings from the study were released in a series of papers published during the 1990s. This video clip will briefly introduce the visual acuity findings from the natural history section of the study. Visual acuity is simply the sharpness or clarity of vision it can be measured by determining the smallest line of letters which can be correctly identified on a vision chart. 2020 is traditionally considered normal visual acuity. 2020 means that the eye being tested can see at 20 feet what a normal eye can see at 20 feet. 2040 is worse than normal. 2040 means that the eye being tested can accurately see at 20 feet what a normal eye can see at a distance of 40 feet. So the second or bottom number is always the distance from which a normal eye can distinguish the letters. The central vein occlusion study used three ranges to present the visual acuity results. So in the next three slides, good visual acuity of 2040 or better is represented with green. Intermediate visual acuity of 2050 to 2200 is represented by yellow, and poor visual acuity worse than 2200 is represented as red. In the paper entitled Natural History and Clinical Management of Central Retinal Vein Occlusion, the authors found that of the eyes that had good visual acuity at the beginning of the study, that is 2040 or better, 65% remained in the good range at the end of the study. 25% declined into the intermediate range, and 10% declined into the poor range. So at the beginning of the study, 209 eyes, without regard to whether they were ischemic or non-ischemic, all types of eyes had visual acuity in the good range. A substantial majority of those eyes with good starting vision ended the study in the good range. A portion declined into the intermediate range, and a smaller portion ended up in the poor range. Of all the eyes that had intermediate visual acuity at the beginning of the study, that is 2050 to 2200, 19% moved up into the good visual acuity range, 44% stayed in the same intermediate range, and 37% declined into the poor range. So of the group of 304 eyes who started off with intermediate visual acuity, including all types of central retinal vein occlusion, a portion improved, a large portion remained in the same range, and a large group worsened. Of all the eyes that had poor visual acuity, worse than 2200 at the beginning of the study, 1% moved up into the good range, 19% improved into the intermediate range, and 79% remained in the poor range. So a few of the 201 eyes that started with poor vision had a dramatic improvement. Another portion had more moderate improvement, and the majority stayed in the poor vision range. The course of the disease, as documented by this study, was not completely free of medical intervention. Laser treatments were tested as prevention and used as treatment of neovascular complications. In addition, laser treatments were tested in some of the patients that developed macular edema to see if such treatment would be beneficial. In these macular edema patients, no difference was shown in the visual acuity of the overall groups of treated and untreated patients. Also of note, the study was conducted years before the first experimental intravitreal injections of anti-VEGF agents.
To sum up, then, although it would have been interesting to see the ischemic and non-ischemic data separately, the central vein occlusion study, combining all forms of the disease, nonetheless provides an important view into the natural course of central retinal vein occlusion. The study involved a large number of patients followed over a substantial time frame. From a patient's perspective, one highlight of the visual acuity data was that some individuals either retained good vision or improved to good vision over time without extraordinary medical intervention.